We're sitting with Albay Governor Joey Salceda, who's recognized as one of the disaster risk reduction climate change adaptation experts in the Philippines. Governor Salceda, yes. looking at how the Philippines has handled this so far, how would you assess the response? Uh, I think um, we're mov may kulang, <laughs> pero right direction. I think we have the ability as well as I think institutional predisposition to do it, uh, as well as we have a very viable international ecosystem. So I think it should do well. Now on the 10th day, I think uh, uh, since we've been down there, everything should be positive from there. Let me ask you going back, how yeah. pre were, what were our preparations like? I mean, the, the night before President Aquino called and had a nationwide address, warning did we wise, do the right things? Uh, warning wise, I think perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of the impacts though, translating the warnings into impacts and exposure. When you say impacts, what will it mean? Like uh, to some people, they, didn't, uh, they thought it's just the strong winds plus floods. So they missed out on the storm That's surge. True. But in my province, for example, as early as Saturday, I was already warned by Prisco Nilo that something might hit me. So I started to blog about it in Facebook. And I already told the members of the council that uh, there's this thing and they start preparing. So by Monday, I already asked um, Secretary Dinky Soliman for 15,000 bags of rice, which I need, the food I need for to evacuate people ahead. And then on a Wednesday, we finally issued the order to evacuate. So for example, in Ginobata, uh, and Pulang, we had two days evacuation, two days, two nights, right before uh, Yolanda Yolan hit us. So if you use that standard, which may be like uh, a gold standard, gold standard in the Philippines, I think uh, significantly inadequate. The preparations were significantly adequate, inadequate in terms of evacuation. Because you cannot do anything about the damages. Right, you know? right. Uh, so but the cas casualties, I think uh, philosophically, I think the only viable goal is your casualty because you cannot leave you know one life is just too much uh, in terms of the actual crisis response so by saturday morning we had the c-130s coming in and from friday afternoon actually the typhoon hit friday at 8 30 in the morning radio silence there was nothing no communications until saturday morning um, what should have happened in the crisis response that's there? What do you see? What were the good things? What were the bad things? What could have been improved? Well, uh, I don't know, but uh, hindsight is always sure. uh, good, very good. But definitely uh, the, the conclusion that the, the LGUs cannot take on their appropriate jobs, I think uh, immediately the national government should have come in, bring in all the trucks, restore law and order, restore all the communications, since it can be reached by land. Yes through Matnog. And virtually, you know, I mean, for example, my team has been coming back and forth to Leite for four times already. Right, right. So in fact, I think we might be able to see some kind of a corridor between Albay and Leite at this point because there's been so much traffic, relief traffic between Albay and Leite. Did the national government contact you for help for the areas that were not Yes, reachable? yes, yes. We usually get our orders from OCD. So immediately the following day, we, we sent deployed. Team Albay and they, they were there. And we were we were first to uh, pick up a corpse because they just didn't have the heart to do it, or they did not know what to do about because there's a very specific course called Management of Dead and Missing Persons. It's a whole booklet, <laughs> and you know we train our pe some of our people there. And second, we were the first to provide water because definitely the water is the most important thing. We were the first one to raise the flag. <laughs> in Leyte, and uh, I think we were the first humanitarian team essentially there. So we, 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 we responded, and it's a big team, 179 people. And we brought in all the necessary food. We, we don't want to be, you know. So what happened? What was the problem? I mean, it took until day five before aid really Finally, flowed you know, out yeah. to people. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I think basically because there was no if you compare it to our body, yes. there was no blood circulatory system. Uh, and that means a lot of transportation. There were roadblocks and there were, uh, I think, rigidities in the supply, essentially in the ports. Lack of C-130s, lack of trucks. You see, uh, as early as Monday, I had 37 trucks mm -hmm. in Albay to do prepositioning as well as evacuation, whereas Maroas only had eight on the eighth day. 
he had eight eight trucks to deliver food but you see Leyte is can be is, is so you know accessible by land and we could have immediately sent all the trucks there by uh, land and by ship also i didn't see that many ships coming in oh, yeah maraming maraming ano, entry points naman eh. uh -huh. hindi naman siya parang berlin eh. I, I didn't see you know a berlin kind of uh, this uh, uh, kind of um, operation there I think uh, there were just too many ano, naman eh. and, and um, siguro so the where are we <laughs> um, in terms of what what could have done been done better what, ah, what could happen? have been done better yeah. yes yeah. the Roros the Roros coming Hindi, in there um, were no ships coming in kailangan in assume kagad yun no? uh -oh. kahit sa giwa yung LGU diba, may, may port sila doon oh. pero kailangan yung LGU yung, yung role namin yung dapat trinabaho kagad nila oh. in the meantime tapos nirevive din kagad well, the, there were no dead uh, vice mayors. There yes. were no dead councillors. So that means essentially, they were all alive. In in terms of uh, where we are now, uh -huh. you have a huge international response, and you still have parts. I mean, now it's gotten out. It's a little bit more systematic. It's much more systematic. What dangers do you see? What actions need to be taken? I think I see more opportunities actually. <laughs> Uh, first, I think we could do uh, some. Uh, we could do better, really, with the distribution by organizing all the local cluster approach, yes. which essentially will allow uh, the foreigners to be part of the coordinations, because some of them will be overserved, some will be underserved, yes. and the tendency is where the media is, they will be there. It's very normal. Yes. And uh, secondly, I think we should have um, uh, a national coordinating uh, cluster. National Coordinating Council for uh, the reconstruction, uh, which will essentially one uh, do the disaster assessment and needs analysis, and so we can have the parameters. And then second, probably we could have local clusters as well. And then after that, I think we can have uh, a donor pledging session mm -hmm. uh, because once you you have the needs analysis and the recovery program, they could be, they are become financiable essentially. Easily, the Philippines, I think, can raise. To me, uh, um, the Haiti was able to raise $12 billion in five years yes. and for nothing. I mean, see, the, the, the people still, there are still 400,000 people in tents. Yes. I think with a good, better governance now in the Philippines, I think we could, uh, I think uh, there, there's in, there's, uh, there are incentives for donating mm -hmm. in the Philippines in uh, mobilizing international generosity. Um, Especially those who don't want to pay up on in war, so I think we'll be paying here. So essentially, that gives them a chance for the reconstruction. Now, I mean, a yes, going a for bit term, sure. what what are the best practices in your mind? What would you want to keep in mind? Um, first, how do you rebuild Leyte and Samar? Uh, don't build where don't build what is destroyed, because that means the risk is there. Yes. So you're building back better elsewhere. And second is uh, relocation. Uh, do it. Um, um, uh, you need planning for that. And then you need geostrategic intervention because this is a nice chance to build a new Leyte, a new Warai nation, or a new Tacloban city, a new city for Tacloban. And because there's so much resources coming in, then I think uh, rehabilitation should essentially be development-guided rehabilitation and reconstruction. So this is a chance because uh, the problem in generally is that you should develop and you bring in already uh, disaster uh, redu risk reduction. Unfortunately, there's no money for that. The money comes in only once there is a, cri once there is a disaster. So now, so the only time like Albay was able is during Reming, a lot of money came in and we used it to modernize at, at the same time, make development more disaster resilient and more climate resilient. Yes. Last question. Yes. Lessons learned. I know it's still very early, but from you, you're watching this, what lessons can we learn? You must have a heart. <laughs> Conscience is not enough. You must have a heart. Uh, I think uh, um, second, um, I think that pretty much, I think there's no heart for this thing. Uh, 
I mean, if every every local government unit has the heart for disaster risk reduction, I think. What do you mean when you say you have to have the heart? Like me, you know, I'm supposed to go to Warsaw on Saturday. I had to just stay and uh, take on the job that's needed, provide leadership yeah. uh, in the middle of um, the biggest risk that I ever confronted in my life then, you know. and. I have a lot of things in mind, but I don't know how to organize them. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> and second is um, do cluster approach. Mo third, uh, trust the locals. Mm -hmm. And um, cash is the best form of relief. Uh, trust them. You know, they will not steal from their own. So in other words, you can give them the money for building, they can build their own houses once the education has been, uh, has been selected. That's what we do. We give them 100, we give them 70,000 for the materials and they, are, they can, can put up their own houses. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Biglang nagsara yung utak ko. We've been speaking with Albay Governor Joey Salceda. Thanks for joining us.